So I am going to share the screen and we are going to go to the daily lesson plans today. And the first thing that I want to tell you is that we do have a homework that is due Monday. And let's start with that. I'm going to show you the homework and we're going to talk about it. Can you check if you have it in your tarea tab? Do you see it in your tarea tab? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're using the verb, the, yeah, the verbs from chapter, from this chapter, to conjugate in the three verb tenses that we have learned this year. So we're going to conjugate in the present tense in this table here, and then the preterite and the imperfecto here. And it's a lot of them, so that's why I would recommend you to do two today, two tomorrow, because it's all of them. So it's kind of a lot. Some of them are irregulars, remember, are irregulars. Also, if you look at here, this part, three links that takes you to the actual content. So if you don't remember the ending for presente, you click on the link and you can see the endings there. Then if you click on imperfecto, same thing. It will take you to the imperfecto conjugations. And the same thing for preterito. And remember, preterito has a lot of irregulars. So don't forget to look into the irregulars on the preterito. Also, I included the link for the vocab. So you can actually look at the verbs and, and write what they mean, okay? So do you know what we're doing on the tarea? Yep. Yes? Awesome. And it is due Monday at 9 p.m., so you still have time, see? All right, let's go back to our capítulo 4A, and I need you to click on Predator and Imperfect Describing a Situation. Tell me if you have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one thing that I need you to do, because I added this, I added this after I distributed everything. So scroll down, go to the content library. Go to the content library. Scroll down. Do you see where I am right now here? So you're going to grab this paragraph that has from one through three. It says right here. Click on that and copy paste on your own. And we're going to start with this actually. So copy paste on your own page. And let's write down what this is talking about. So who remembers, who can tell me the first or one of the three examples that we learned on the Grammativa? There were three situations in the past in which we always use imperfect. Anybody remember? Hint, hint. One is time. When we are, and you can type this also on your own, own page. When we are talking about what time slash day slash month slash etc something something is happening in the past we use imperfect. Any questions or comments? I think you had a question, Nicolas, or no? Oh, no, I was going to give one of the other ones. Okay, give me the second one then. Isn't it emotions? Emotions. When we are talking about emotions that someone 
had in the past. We use the imperfect. Do you remember the third one, Alisa? Um, no. So, do you remember, Nicolas? No. Weather. So, when we are talking about what the weather was like in the past, then we use the imperfect. Okay? All right, so let's read our grammatica here. And I'm gonna start with this part. So take a look how it says, in addition to saying what someone used to do, the imperfect tense is used for. To describe people, places, and situations in the past. To describe, so description. Nicholas, can you read the second one? To talk about a past action or situation when no beginning or end is specified. So no beginning or end is specified. An action that happened in the past, but we don't have the beginning, we don't have the end. We don't have a time frame. Alisa, read the third one for me, please. To describe the situation or background information when something else happened or interrupted the ongoing action. Yes. So, um, Nicolas, read the first example here. Um, todos mis parentes. Oh, the one that I highlighted in yellow. Oh, Sorry. That one. Uh, la casa de mis abuelos era enorme. Tenía cinco. Dormitorio. Mm -hmm. Are they using the imperfect there? Uh, C. Si. How do you know? You're right, but how do you know? The conjugation. Mm -hmm. Era and tenia is verbs that are conjugated in the imperfect. Now, do you understand what is saying? Um, the cost or the house of my grandparents is very big. Mm -hmm, very big they and? Have, they have five bedrooms. Right, now you said is and you said have. Was. Was, correct, in the past. They're describing my grandparents' right. house. It was and it had. Correct. Okay. Alisa, can you read the second example? Había mucha gente en la casa para aniversario. So, do you remember what había comes from? Uh, mm. I wrote it in the screen. Do you see it? No, uh, hold on. Oh, haber. Yes, it comes from the verb haber. And it's the imperfect of the verb haber. So, it's so, talking about the past. Do you remember what a bit is when we say I have? Oh, there... it is there is there are. So bit, there is there are. So what do you think this one is saying? There were many people in the house. Correct. There were many people in the house. Yes. Um, and why is it in the imperfect, you think? Uh, because it was in the past. And then it said there's uh, no beginning or end specified. Right. So it's a description of the past without a beginning and without an end. Does that make sense? Okay, Nicolas, read the last one. Oh, sorry. Uh, Todos mis parentes bailaban cuando llegamos. Okay, this one is a little bit different. To describe the situation or background information when something else happened or interrupted the ongoing action. So look at the two verbs. Are they in the same verb tense? No. Correct, they are not. Which one is then the imperfect? 
llegamos. That's the predator. Oh, uh, yeah. perfect I perfect is Abba Ia. Those are so, the end. Bailaban. Bailaban. Yes, bailaban is in the imperfect, so then llegamos is in the preterite. So this one is saying that something was going on, which is bailaban, they were dancing, when something happened, and that is that we arrived. So the preterite is in the, that verb is in the preterite because it's saying this happened one time while something else was happening. While they were dancing, we arrived. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to play. By the way, I also have the link for imperfect and predator right here because we're going to work on an activity later. And so you have it handy there. So let me play the tutorial and share this page here. Are we supposed to be hearing something? Is there audio to this? Because I can't hear anything. Oh, you can't hear? No. Nicholas, can you hear? No. Oh, I played it. So you can see, but you cannot hear. Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. Sorry. I know. I didn't click the share computer sound. Now I did. Okay. Hopefully this. Let's go. Spanish uses now? two past okay, tenses, perfect. the preterite for completed actions and the imperfect for actions that were in progress, ongoing, or repeated. The preterite, like the English simple past, expresses perfective aspect. The imperfect like the English phrases was plus ing and used to expresses in perfective aspect. The preterite is used to refer to any past action that is considered complete. In this example, yesterday is complete. Today is not. Now, this is when it gets confusing because look, it's talking about weather, right? But the one thing that happens that makes it preterit is that they are actually telling us, do you see my cursor? When it says anoche, that is telling us the time frame when this started. Do, do, do you get that? So that is why we need to put it in the predator. But when you're describing what the weather was like and we don't know when this happened, then you're using the imperfect. See? That also happens with time. We're going to talk about that. There's some words that are triggering the predator. The imperfect is used to provide the background information or set the stage for other actions. It describes people and tells time in the past. So look at this one. This one is the weather. And it doesn't have any word that says when it started. It says when I arrived. So then the preterite is arrived and the background is that it was raining. Does that make sense? The difference between the two? So we're both in that sentence, it's both preterite. Say that again. The sound is a little bit like breaking. Say that in again. In that sentence, in the example, does that mean that those, both those verbs would be in preterite? So, llovía is in the imperfect. Llegué is in the preterite. And it would still, so llovía would be an imperfect because it's 
it's talking about the time without telling you exactly a time, if that makes sense. They are okay. talking about yesterday or when I arrived, but we don't know exactly a time frame in which this happened. Okay. It says while or when I arrived. And so the weather in this sentence, it's really the background. It's describing the background. What was going on when I arrived home? Okay. Yes. And then yeah. Yege is in the preterite because I arrived only one time to my house at this in this sentence, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Nicolas, is it making sense? Sí. It is tricky. So I'm glad that you bring uh, questions. So in this one, look how it says estaba and then quería. They're both in what verb tense? Imperfect. They are both in the imperfect because they're saying two things that were happening or how they were feeling in the past. So there's nothing that is a one-time event. There's nothing telling you when this started and when it ended. It's just description. Background description. In this case, how this person was feeling. Make sense? All right. So with that in mind, let's go back to our activity. So you're going to do it on your own thing, on your own page. And I'm going to give Nicolas from five through eight and Alisa from one through, five, through four. And again, you have links here. So it would be easier for you to remember the endings, look up if there's any irregulars in the paragraph, and also decide, are you gonna use predator or imperfect based on what we just uh, learned? And I will anticipate that there are gonna be things that are gonna be confusing. Try to think again, when is time imperfect? When is the weather imperfect? Okay, all right. So I'm going to give you until one, um, one fifteen is good. If you finish before, that's, that's great. And if there's any questions, any words that you don't understand, let me know. And I'm going to highlight what the verbs are going to be.
So four more minutes is good? Yeah, that's fine. No worries, you're fine. All right, perfect. So I'm going to read it, and when I get to the blank, uh, Alisa, you're going to start, right? You're starting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, queridos padres, acabo de pasar unos días increíbles. Mi familia española. And why do you think it's imperfect? Um, because they're saying they, they decided to do something, so it's like setting the stage for something, I think. And but when they decide, did they decide like in a period of time? Or was it a one-time thing, a decision that they made? Oh, it was a one-time thing. Right? So we are yeah. going to use the preterite on this one. And the other thing is, did you say, did you treat it as singular, right? You did. Yeah. So, decidio. Because familia, even if it's a group, it's, uh, it's considered a singular noun. Yeah, so grammatically, that's why we have to say it that way. Okay, so decidió ir a Sevilla para celebrar la Semana Santa. Nosotros... Llegamos. Bien, llegamos. Why didn't you use imperfect if they're talking about time? This is tricky. Uh, because it's a one-time thing. Yeah, it's a one-time like, thing. Same, same the past. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. with yeah, and it's saying it's saying the day, but it's still one time, right? One time. This happened yesterday or, or that that Tuesday. It's not saying what day was it when they arrived. It's saying when this happened. That is the it's showing us the beginning, like a time frame, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me go now and say, eh, llegamos el martes por la noche y las calles ya. Esto. So calles. Streets. Right. So it's plural. And are you going to use imperfect oh. or preterite? Wait, would it be imperfect this time? It is imperfect. Why? So, estaban? Yes, estaban. Why? Uh, 
because it's describing a place yes so here is i'm going to show you describe people places it's number one display describe people places and situations in the past all right nice um, so estaban llenas de personas había un desfile que en la semana santa se llama procesión en la procesión ¿Vamos? sorry Ve veíamos sí veíamos Again, describing that procession, right? So, mm -hmm. veíamos pasos muy grandes con flores y estatuas enormes que se llaman imágenes de las iglesias. Las, ima las imágenes... Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. that's you, Nicolás. Sorry. Yeah. Is it Eran? It is Eran. Good job. Why did okay. you choose the imperfect? Um because it's talking about something at a specific time well not really what it's doing is describing the object right so it's describing these images that were antiques and impress impressives so that's why they're using the imperfect description see description okay the next one um, antiguas y muy impresionantes. Había bandas y otras personas que tocaban música durante las procesiones. Y luego ocurrió algo, algo fantástico. Una mujer salió. Salió. Good job with the predator. Because. Um, Can you just one time. One time. She exited to the balcony one time, right? Sí, muy bien. Eh, salió a un balcón y... Empezó. Empezó. Excelente. Again, the same description, right? Because right. It, she started one thing one time. Right. She started to sing. So, empezó a cantar una saeta. Una saeta es una canción del estilo flamenco que cantan aquí en Sevilla. Todas las personas en la calle escucharon con atención mientras, ellas can mientras ella cantaba. Por fin, el paso... Llegaron. And it's one. So it's not ellos, but it's el paso. Oh. Uh, uh, Llegué. Llegué. Llegó. Llegué would be for the yo form. Llegué es the yo form. ¿Ya? Llegó es el ella. So, yes, good job. Again, they arrived at, at a one time. It was not something that was happening. So, el paso llegó a la entrada de la catedral y entró, como es de costumbre, eh, durante la semana pasada. La semana santa, sorry. Qué experiencia más maravillosa. Okay, that's it. Good job. It gets confusing, definitely gets confusing. So hang in there. We're going to try and practice more and more. And that is for today. This is our third to last uh, Zoom call. The last one is going to be in our final week, but we don't have a final. We are going to have a project that I'm thinking about what it's going to look like, but it's going to be during the Zoom call. Okay? That's what I'm trying to figure out, if I can do that or maybe, because I want to do something with oral. So okay. I'm, I'm going to let you know what that's going to look like next Thursday. Okay. Okay? All right. Any questions or comments? No. All right. Perfect. Good to see you guys. Continue your hard work. We are almost done. Hang in there. Adiós, Gracias. chicos. Bye. Gracias. Gracias.